This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We already have a bit of an odd duck in the NFL for this week where there aren't a lot of like super, super high profile games, but there are some games that have pretty high stakes in large part because there are teams in some desperation mode for this week. There are some really good teams with large spreads. So interesting weekly it's from a betting perspective. We're going to break down how to handle that. Uh, some of those, those high leverage games and try to get you ready for week three in the NFL. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am every Thursday by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank Ed. Week three is an odd one. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. I mean, I feel like, you know, this was like week two in college football where there weren't a lot of marquee games, but uh, it was interesting nonetheless. I think we'll see the same thing uh, this week. And, uh, you know, it's the NFL. I mean, it's it's funny to hear. You. It is definitely true that some teams are in desperation mode, but it's two weeks into the season. Yeah. And 17, 17. games now. Yeah. Yeah. We got a long way to go, but I don't know. Maybe just uh, maybe the fact that it's Vikings Chargers specifically, like the chaos of those two teams converging. I'm not sure my brain can like actually grasp how dumb that game will be on Sunday. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure it's necessarily going to be dumb. You, you got some Justin Jefferson in there. You got like, you know, Justin Herbert who can be brilliant. So we'll see. There's that old Kevin Clark tweet of saying that the the Seahawks had never played a normal game. That could also apply to both the Vikings and the Chargers. So I'm excited to see how that one plays out. I know it'll be entertaining regardless of what happens. We'll talk about that game and more and get you ready for week three here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you want some thoughts on tonight's Thursday night football game, check out Primetime Tom with Tom Vecchio breaking down player props for the 49ers and the Giants. That is up in your Covering the Spread podcast feed right now. Along with FanDuel TV Plus, we also had our week four college football preview with ed yesterday that is up in the feed previewing a fantastic slate of college football that is up in the the podcast feed the fanduel youtube page and fanduel tv plus to get fanduel tv plus make sure you go to uh, fanduel tv plus on amazon fire apple tv or roku and you can also go to fanduel.com slash watch snap into action this nfl season with fanduel america's number one sports book right now new customers can bet two or get two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a five dollar bet that's two hundred dollars in bonus bets win or lose If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1 888 789 7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. MDGamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y in New York. Now, before we dig into the big games for this weekend, I want to talk to you about big spreads because we've got a lot of them for this week. And my model personally is having a hard time catching up to those because it's early in the year, which means there's increased uncertainty. 
And so it's harder to get you a very confident number at that point. So I want to ask you, is your model pushing you to back some of the bigger dogs this week? Or what are you doing with those larger spreads we see for week three? My model actually has uh, a lot of these larger spreads. You know, I have San Francisco by 11 tonight. Um, and, and I think it's basically because of how I do at least one part of my preseason model. When I do my bosom of crowds preseason model, I'm taking subjective power rankings. But the way I map them onto ratings is by like my year end numbers. Um, so like I know on average how good the best team in the NFL is compared to average, how bad the worst team is in, in number of points compared to average. So I feel like that it tends to be an aggressive model. Like the spreads between the top and the bottom team tend to be pretty big, at least compared to what my market rankings say. They tend to be a little bit more conservative. They tend to, uh, you know, have a smaller spread between teams. Um, I, I mean, actually, look, both of them are involved in my rankings right now. But um, yeah, I mean, because of the wisdom of crowds, because of the way I constructed, I, I am getting some pretty big spreads. Uh, there's a pretty big spread that I actually don't believe in. And we can talk about that in, in a little bit. Um, but you know, I've Jacksonville by nine. So it, it, I am getting, um, some pretty big spreads and, and, and pretty in line with the markets, at least on those games. Yeah. For me, the big one is Arizona, uh, 12 and a half. It's hard to like, I know we had this discussion the year the dolphins right. were tanking. Uh, that was, uh, the Josh Rosen, um fits magic year where they like got blasted like they lost relative to the spread by like 21 points the first couple of games they showed up right. as a value then and at that time it was like okay you need to show value ignore that for the cardinals like 12 and a half at home is tough even though i've got dallas right. i think they're the top team for my power rankings right now which i don't know how i feel about i don't know if i'd hang hand rank them there but like they're the top team it's hard to get to, to 12 and a half when one team is at home yeah, absolutely. I mean, I actually do have Dallas by about 12. I think okay. partially that's because like, you know, the market win total mm -hmm. uh, was assuming no Kyler. I guess, actually, I guess that, that would be the other way. Um, I think some of the early season adjustments, uh, I try not to make them that aggressive in the NFL, right. but inevitably they end up that way. For whatever reason, uh, I am at 12 in that game. Uh, you know, it does seem to be capturing the difference there. I, I'm, I'm actually pretty high in Dallas. So if they're number one, I don't know exactly where they are in my my top, my uh, most trusted numbers, but I think they're going to be good. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, were one of the best three teams in, in the NFL when all is said and done. Yeah, they actually are first for me. I just checked. So they are first. Um, still can't quite get to that number, but uh, I, I've just kind of ignored it personally. The fact that I'm showing value there because I don't trust that it's fully legitimate. So Hopefully that doesn't bite me, but I think hearing that your numbers also are large uh, reassures me that staying away from these games, despite seeing value, is probably the proper way to handle things there. Let's take a look at some of the bigger games in week number three and start things off with a very fun one because both the Chargers and the Vikings are in need of a victory here in week number three. The Vikings are currently one and a half point favorites. That's bounced around the entire week uh, like 16,000 times. Moneyline has stayed more steady. Currently, the Vikings there are minus 110. Chargers minus 106 at FanDuel Sportsbook. They're both 0-2 so far, Ed. So which team do you think should be more concerned about how things have gone thus far? Probably neither. They are collective 0 and 4 in one score games. So, you know, let's not make too much of, of whatever it is. I mean, I think the Chargers have, lo have lost by a grand total of what, three or four points or something like that. Uh, Minnesota, you know, uh, ran into Tampa Bay week one, uh, lost to Philly week two. So, um, you know, when I look at this game, it, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I looked at the. I, just catching up on what what's going on with the Chargers' pass defense and like their coverage braids have been awful this year. Um, I don't really expect that to continue. I think you're going to get some regression to um, where you know. I mean, I think a pretty talented set of corners, uh, J.C. Jackson and Sante Samuel Jr. Uh, and they, you know, and they were decent in my numbers uh, last year. They certainly weren't terrible uh, like they have been so far this year. Um, and then with Minnesota, you know, I think the question is a little bit different because I just I, I don't think there's much talent on that defense, uh, especially in the secondary. It's not a team I'm particularly high on. You know, when you sent me the the rundown yesterday, you know, the Chargers were a one point favorite. Now yeah. Minnesota is a one and a half point favorite. 
Um, so my numbers actually have Minnesota by two. I'm yeah. not necessarily sure I believe that. I mean, if you're saying Minnesota by two, you're essentially saying these teams are pretty even on a neutral field. I think the Chargers are the vastly more talented team. So uh, I'm I'm more more likely to uh, let's see preseason I would have had uh, the Chargers by about a half point, so I actually like this number where it was with the Chargers being the favorite. Um, I'm uh, I haven't bet it yet, but now now that like I, I'm I'm actually interested in Chargers plus one and a half. I think mm-hmm. I think they're clearly the more talented team minus Justin Jefferson, and uh, yeah, that's I, I I like where my preseason number is more than than where my where 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 um my current model is yeah i've got this as uh the vikings by 1.3 points uh so that is a bit less than home field so it does say the Chargers are a slightly better team but it's not a big gap and i agree with you where the talent on the vikings defense is much worse than on the charger side of things um, I'm assuming Austin Eckler is out for what that's worth i think because he's such a big piece in the passing game um he does matter there it doesn't matter enough where i'm like you know, showing the Chargers being overvalued or anything like that. But um, I am largely on board with you where even though the Chargers have been bad so far, I don't know if that'll be a sign of things to come. Also, I would say, Ed, and you can disagree with this, but like, I think that I was honestly a bit more encouraged by the Chargers last week, despite their loss, because A, they didn't have Eckler. B, I know the defense played poorly, but the offense kind of lived up to like the hype. Because there was all this talk this offseason about Kellen Moore unleashing Justin Herbert, and he actually did throw downfield in week two, which is what I want. So I know they lost that game, but weirdly, I feel better about them now than I did in that game. And I feel like I'm actually like if I if I don't, but if I were have to have shown value on the Chargers, I think I would have felt pretty good about that personally. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see exactly how Kellen Moore kind of evolves as the OC. Um, and, but I think seeing good things that, that you liked is definitely a positive and it just points more towards, you know, taking charges plus one and a half. All right, let's move to your neck of the woods for the second one, Ed, because we've got the Falcons taking on the Lions. This is now a three-point game. It has shifted down to a field goal. Uh, the minus three on Detroit is minus 115. Total in this game is 46 and a half. Falcons 2-0 and so far. Hasn't always been pretty. The passing offense has been uh, limited and erratic. But what's your read on the Falcons heading into week three, Ed? I, I've really been kind of questioning the Falcons all year. They are a team that seems to ignore the fact that passing is king in the NFL. Um, you know, they're going with the second year quarterback in Desmond Ritter. They drafted B. John Robinson, although he actually is leading the team in targets. So he, you know, he is a player that can affect the passing game. So, so let's be, uh, let's be clear about that. Um, you know, uh, Atlanta was actually pretty good last year, b- despite having an awful pass defense. They were actually last when I look at my adjusted success rate. This year, they look a lot better. Uh, they are seventh when I look at passing success rate allowed. But let's put that in context. They played Bryce Young in Carolina week one. Last week, they got Green Bay uh, with, you, you know, a, a guy starting his, what, third game in, in Jordan Love and no Aaron Jones, no Christian Watson. So, Let's not think that the Atlanta Falcons defense is going to be good. I don't think it's very good. Actually, I think both these teams' defenses are bad. You know, I had a lot of hope for Detroit, the Detroit Lions defense this year. Haven't really, uh, haven't really seen it. They've kind of gotten torn apart. Well, actually, not. I mean, not really. They they were bad against Seattle last week. Um, and, you know, I mean, they bring in Emmanuel Mosley and the guy hasn't played a single snap yet because he's hurt. Now, uh, CJ Gardner Johnson is, is on the injury list. I think both defenses are bad. But, um, I mean, I think Detroit is better at throwing the football. Uh, Jared Goff has been good. A little concerned that Amon Ross St. Brown uh, is on the injured list. It said a cramp. I've also heard stuff about uh, a toe. So Her that's toe. concerning. Yeah. But it, what's that? Turf toe. A turf toe. Yeah, so that, that's a little bit concerning, but overall, I think the Lions uh, are much better at throwing the ball. My model has this uh, Detroit by six. I actually really like Detroit minus three here. Um, I think they cover this and potentially cover this really easy. And, you know, like the way my model is set up, it is often going to be against the Atlanta Falcons. And I do yeah. feel like some weeks that's going to look really silly uh, because, you know, Atlanta is going to be able to run the ball on some people. But 
I don't feel like Detroit is a kind of team that is just going to get gashed in the run game. Um, you know, and even this year, they're kind of mid pack when you look at PFF grades in terms of uh, rush defense. So it, 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 it doesn't seem like a situation that Atlanta can take care of. I actually really like Detroit in this situation. So I smiled because we're two for two in being in lockstep, Ed, uh, because we were like half a point off of the Vikings and I have 5.7 or 5.8 for the Charger or for the Lions here in this nice. game. And it's for the exact same reasons you discussed, you know, passing uh, gets higher weight in my model. I know last week the Falcons came from behind against the, the Packers, but do you expect them when they get a negative game script to be able to erase that gap often? I don't personally. And yeah. that's why passing efficiency gets a larger weight is because it's more applicable in like every script. Amon Ross St. Brown did return to practice on uh, Thursday and he's a good enough player where if he's truly, truly banged up, he doesn't have to play or practice, but he did practice on Thursday and late in that game, like he had left for a bit and then he came back in like the fourth quarter and he made a reception. He looked great on it. So he can play through that injury looked really good. I know there's no David Montgomery, but like Jameer Gibbs fully capable uh, filling in here. And if that encourages the Lions to throw the ball more, even better. So I actually yeah. not only have the Lions at, I also like the over in this game at 46 and a half. Uh, the over is minus 105 right now. It was 45 and a half up to 46 and a half. So to me, I feel like there are a lot of signs pointing to offense in this game, but also the Lions being a bit undervalued. I'm a bit surprised it got to three, but right. honestly, I feel like that should just, you know, no complaints personally. Right. And you have to remember, like, the Lions probably should have won last week against Seattle. They had Correct. a pick six. They had some yeah. other turnovers. Uh, they were better. I Definitely in terms of yards, I think in terms of success rate as well. Um, so, I mean, they should be two. Well, probably one on one is fair. And I'm not necessarily just sure reversing which one they won. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think, uh, I, I honestly, I don't really like either team, but I like Detroit yeah. a lot more. I'm definitely going to go with my numbers on this one. I will go with mine as well. So we're both on Detroit here for this weekend. Final game to discuss here is the Saints at the Packers, where right now the Packers are one and a half point favorites. Total of this game is 42 and a half. That spread is tightened because it was two and a half. It's now one and a half. So it's a movement towards the Saints. And Ed, Jordan Love has put up decent surface level numbers so far, but we know surface level numbers can be kind of fluky and they were in a very plus matchups. So where are you at on this new look Packers offense through two weeks? Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, it's hard when you have no Aaron Jones and Christian Watson last week, right? So they're still questionable for this game. I, I think that really matters, especially with, uh, with a young quarterback. Um, yeah, let's talk about new Orleans. I think they got lucky as heck to beat a, <laughs> pretty bad Carolina team last week, right? I mean, Bryce Young had the fumble when they were uh, in in their territory. And, you know, New Orleans offense wasn't doing anything until Chris Olave caught that miracle uh, pass up the sideline. And I don't know, if you take out whatever those 40, 50 yards were, um, you know, a lot of things kind of change in that game. The Saints defense was great, and that's kind of what we expect. Um, and so... I don't know. I, I kind of, <laughs> there's a part of me that expects Derek Carr to go back to the way he was two years ago. And maybe that's just really not going to happen. Um, so I don't know. I think a lot of questions there, obviously a lot of questions about green Bay uh, with, you know, with Jordan love at the quarterback position. Um, I don't, I don't know what, what to think uh, about this game. Oh, the other thing about green Bay, you know, like they had the pretty good win against Chicago week one, but they were plus two in turnovers and they were actually uh six, six percent worse in passing success rate than, than Chicago, which is, you know, not what you want to see when you're facing <laughs> Justin Fields. I don't know what to think about green Bay. I mean, I was kind of on the low side of expectations compared to everyone preseason. Uh, and me double down on that. I also don't know what, to think about new Orleans. Um, I think the injuries really kind of matter. And there's also confusing the picture. I would have made this uh green Bay uh, by about two in the preseason, which kind of seems where the market as is right now. Uh, I'm kind of seeing that in a couple games that, you know, the market's pretty close to the, what I would have made it preseason, particularly that Miami game that you have up right now, minus six and a half. That's not what my model has, but uh, that that's what I would have made it this preseason, which I think is smart, right? Like, I think it's actually smart to stick pretty close to what your preseason prior is uh, and not overreact. 
Um, you know, right now I have adjusted. I have this game pretty close to a pick. That That's actually probably the right answer, especially if Jones and Watson don't play. Uh, but I, I don't know. I have, I have zero interest in betting this. We're a three for three, Ed. 0.22. Uh, I have Green Bay here by 0.22 for this game. So we are within a half point on all three games, uh, our models for this weekend. I did take the under when it was 43 and a half. It's now down to 42 and a half. That's probably because of wind. Uh, there are some, I think 12 mile per hour winds in the forecast for that game. Uh, so I got that at 43 and a half, 42 and a half. I still have, I think a tiny bit of value, but it's at, uh, I have it at 40.8. Uh, so not as much there anymore, uh, in large part because I respect the saints defense, still skeptical of this Packers offense. The saints offense is weird. Kind of like I had the over for the saints Panthers game and just, the second they started to ground and pound before Jamal Williams got hurt, I was like, oh boy, that's dead. So yeah, they were pretty frustrating there, honestly. And I, I think I agree with you where it's a tough game to read. Market's probably pretty accurate in this one. So at least with where things stand right now, I'm okay being a spectator for this one in the afternoon. Any other bets you like across week number three at a FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, I mean, I actually haven't bet this, but I've been thinking about it all week, and that's Cleveland. Uh, is it still minus three and a half? Uh, I believe so. It was Tennessee. as of 20 minutes ago. Yeah. So this game is uh, particularly interesting to me. Um, you kind of have the Nick Chubb factor. He's he's out. Uh, I talked to uh, Tanner Busick from Dr. Bob Sports this morning on my podcast, and, and he said that's worth about a half a point to him. Probably on the low side, what, what people are going to – you know, give that, uh, injury. I also think, uh, so my, my model has this close to eight Cleveland by eight. And, and I think that's too much. Uh, I think, you know, we didn't really see the true Cincinnati team week one. And, you know, my model as, as non-aggressive as, as it tries to be in the early weeks, you know, made, made about a two point adjustment there. So I'm not sure that's necessarily fair. Uh, you know, Cleveland, uh, lost to Pittsburgh, but that was a pretty fluky game with some defensive, touchdowns uh preseason i would have made this cleveland by about five um and when when you look at these so it should probably be about four and a half right now uh and when you look at this game i i just think cleveland's a much better football team i think their defense is going to be really good i think their defense was like kind of strangely not as good as it should have been given the talent that they have on that side of the ball last year you know they bring in jim schwartz this year it looks good it's probably not as good as it has been over two games but I still think that defense is going to be really good. Uh, you know, still lots of questions about Deshaun Watson on the offensive side. I, I I still kind of eventually expect him to get back to at least closer to where he was and not what we've seen through the first two weeks. Uh, and I'm just not really a fan of this Tennessee team at all. So uh, I'm leaning towards betting Cleveland minus three and a half. Uh, that price looks pretty good, minus 102 there. Uh, I just think they're a better football team at home. And... Um, I think you're the right side. I agree. I took the Cleveland money line earlier on this week. That is currently minus 178 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. I think I got it at 176 or somewhere around there. Uh, so also seeing value in Cleveland in this game. I do have a pretty big downgrade in there for Nick Chubb. Because if you run the numbers on this Browns offense with and without Nick Chubb, or when he's like off the field versus on the field, their passing expected points actually do go down a pretty decent amount without Nick Chubb. So he does matter for the area of the field we care more about, which is passing. He also obviously is like the best running back in football. So that part does matter to an extent too, especially for a very run heavy Browns team, but they're going to be forced to throw here. And I think against Tennessee, if you're forced to throw, you're probably going to be pretty effective because Tennessee there is not great, uh, at least compared to what they are against the rush. It's kind of like the old Todd Bowles defense said where, he was, I think uh, Josh Hearns and I wrote about this uh, back in the day where Todd Bowles was too good at stopping the run because it forced opposing teams to throw on them, which made them more efficient as a result. And I think we're kind of seeing that with Tennessee right, right now. And right. I think that that should be a concern for them as far as I, I know that they won last week, but that's a pretty big concern for them. And they've covered both weeks too. So it hasn't bit them yet, but I feel like long term that could wind up being an issue. For sure. Right. I mean, I think sometimes you have like, you know, it's probably better to lean towards what um, Minnesota did last week and take everything away deep and, you know, get gashed on the ground. Like, right. you know, I, I thought it was interesting that, you know, Brian Flores 
treated Jalen Hurts like Peyton Manning, right? Because that's what right. teams used to do. Peyton Manning just just to be like, look, run the ball, please. Um, so yeah, defenses should kind of should uh, should air that way instead of the Todd Bowles way, right? Right. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah we'll see. I agree. We'll you know, that the people. the Browns are a bit undervalued in this game uh, with them at minus three and a half, minus one or two. You said you haven't bet it yet. What was the hesitation for you? Were you thinking the market might move towards Tennessee as a result of the Chubb injury, or what was the the pause for you? Uh, I just I, I haven't had time to completely think it through and 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 get on my phone and do it. I, I, I like it. I mean, I've been looking at yeah, this yeah. all day, and, and I, I haven't talked myself out of it. So let, let's right. just let's just pretend that I've got it already. Uh, as someone who's been very busy this week and has been behind on literally every task, I get that. Uh, I've not bet Xfinity series yet. I'm way behind Ed, so f- can fully, fully relate to that. But I agree with Ed liking Cleveland minus three and a half, which is currently minus 102 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. As a reminder, if you want some Thursday night football thoughts, check out Primetime Tom with Tom Vecchio right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Ed, uh, you were talking about um, some uh, discussions you've had throughout this week over on your podcast. Where can people find that and all of your numbers? Right. I'm over at thepowerrank.com. Uh, come check it out for Five Nuggets Saturday in my email newsletter. Uh, it's my curated list of uh, sports betting tips and analytics. Uh, so check that out at thepowerrank.com. And then my podcast is the Football Analytics Show, wherever you get your podcast. I talk to Tanner Busick, who uh, is the head of analytics over at Dr. Bob Sports. Really interesting conversation. I'd actually never had a chance um, to talk to him about what he does. Uh, he was a little scant on the details, but he was also super generous with bets. Uh, so that'll be up Thursday night. Uh, and uh, check that out wherever you get your podcast. So some halftime listening for Thursday Night Football. Uh, get that at the Football Analytics Show. Find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. We are back once again tomorrow, wrapping up week three by talking player props with the J.J. Zacharyson. Rob Freeman will also drop by to talk about some strikeout props in baseball, and I'll talk NASCAR in Texas as well, and we'll get those Xfinity Series bets in for that. Thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy the football for tonight we'll talk to you once again tomorrow this has been covering the spread right here on the fan duel podcast network